So today's topic is 2.2 uh, trigonometric ratios of any angle found on pages 88 to 99 in your text. Our curriculum outcome is 20.4 to expand and demonstrate understanding of the primary trigonometric ratios, including the use of reference angles from 0 to 360 degrees and the determination of exact values for trigonometric ratios. Our lesson objectives, one, to be able to find an angle and the sine, cosine and tangent ratios when given the coordinates of a point on the terminal arm. Two, to be able to use the concept of reference angles of 30, 45, and 60 degrees, along with special right triangles, to find the ratios for sine, cosine, and tangent. And three, to be able to answer various questions regarding trigonometric ratios. So, recall that every point on the coordinate plane has an x and a y component, so x, comma, y, and either one of these can be negative. And the phrase so katoa, which can help us identify the ratios for sine, cosine, and tan in a right triangle. So we're going to start off with an example here. It says if the point negative 5, negative 12 lies on the terminal arm of an angle, theta, should be another comma here, find the exact ratios for sine theta, cos theta, and tan theta. So you're always going to want to draw a little diagram first. And I'm going to draw the point negative 5 and negative 12. So remember that x is negative on the left and y is negative down. So we're at negative 5, negative 12. We're talking about this point right here. Now, we are going to try and find what sine, cos, and tan are. Now, if you remember, sine, cos, and tan, using Soketoa, is sine is your opposite over your hypotenuse. Cosine is your adjacent over your hypotenuse. And tan is your opposite over adjacent. Now, the problem is we don't have a triangle here yet. So we can draw a triangle and we can use this concept of reference angles. So remember that the reference angle is the angle measured to the nearest x-axis. So that would be this angle right here. And now what we need to do is find out the lengths of these sides. Well, the horizontal side is negative five because it's five to the left and the vertical side is negative 12. Now we can find out this third side, the hypotenuse, by using the Pythagorean theorem. So that would be negative 5 squared plus negative 12 squared equals r squared. We call that the radius vector, or we call it r. So that's 25 plus 169, 144, sorry. And that equals 169, so the square root of that is 13. So r is equal to 13. Now the radius vector, what you need to know is that r is always going to be positive. So y, well, while x and y can change, your r is positive. So now we can find out what sine of theta is. Sine of theta is the opposite over the hypotenuse, so that would just be negative 12 over 13. While cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so well, that's negative 5 over 13. And tangent is opposite over adjacent, that's negative 12 over negative 5, which is just positive 12 over 5. So the next thing we're going to talk about is something called the cast rule. And this is going to be quite helpful in trigonometry. It says, let's take a look at each quadrant in, in the coordinate plane and see if we can predict which sign each of the trig ratios will have in each of those quadrants. So here's our four quadrants. We've got quadrant one, we've got quadrant two, we've got quadrant three, and we've got quadrant four. So if we look at an angle in the first quadrant, we know that the x value is going to be positive and the y value is going to be positive. So any point on this line is going to have a positive coordinate and a positive coordinate. And we know that the radius vector, r, is always positive. So that means that sine's positive in the qu first quadrant, cosine's positive in the first quadrant, and tan is positive in the first quadrant. And that's just by using the ratios um, opposite over adjacent, etc., to find out what sine, cos, and tan are. So it doesn't matter what the ratio is, we know it's going to be a positive answer. In the second quadrant, any point that's on this line is actually going to have a negative x value, but a positive y value. So when we draw a triangle, that means that this side here, the horizontal side, is negative or the adjacent side. So anything that has adjacent in it is actually going to be negative. So sine, because sine doesn't have adjacent in it, it's just opposite over hypotenuse, it's actually positive. Cosine is negative and tan is also negative. In the third quadrant, like the question we just did, you can see that both the x value and the y value are both negative, so this point has two negative coordinates. And so anything that has um, adjacent and, uh, and opposite in it 
um, will have a negative value except for 10 because it's um, a negative divided by a negative. So we have sine of theta, which is opposite over hypotenuse, and that's negative. Cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse, that's negative. And tan theta is opposite over adjacent, well that's a negative divided by a negative, and that gives you a positive. And in the fourth quadrant, any point that's on this, uh, this line here, the radius vector will have a negative x value, sorry, a positive x value, but a negative y value. And so if we're gonna find sine, which is opposite over hypotenuse, the opposite side is negative over hypotenuse, which is positive, so that gives you a negative answer. Cosine is adjacent, so the horizontal, which is positive over a positive, gives you a positive. And tangent is a opposite over adjacent, negative, divided by a positive, which is a negative. So the cast rule comes from the realization that all of the ratios are positive in the first quadrant. Only sine is positive in the second quadrant. In the third quadrant, the only thing that's positive is tan. And in the fourth quadrant, the only thing that's positive is cosine. So here's your cast rule. It's called cast because it lines up uh, like the word cast, um, starting in the fourth quadrant and then moving counterclockwise. All right, so our next example is using the cast rule and reference angles to answer some questions. So now that we know that there are always going to be two quadrants in which each ratio is positive, so the first quadrant, because everything's positive in the first quadrant, and then one of the other three, we need to be careful when we know the ratio for something and we're asked to find the angle. So here's our example. It says if sine theta is equal to negative 0 0.8090, find all the measures of theta of your angle that will make this true. So if we think of it, we know the cast rule tells us that sine is going to be negative in two quadrants. And sine is negative in quadrant three, and it's negative in quadrant four. So now when we use our calculator, all we need to do is find out the second function sine of and I always ignore the sign on the number because I know that it's narrowed down to quadrants three and four. 0 0.8090. And when I do that, I find that the answer is 54 degrees. Now, your calculator is only as smart as you are. Sometimes you have to interpret the answers. And so what your calculator will do, if you put in just the ratio without the sign, it's gonna tell you the reference angle. So it's saying that the angle is 54 degrees. So that means that we're talking about the angle being in quadrants three and four. That means that this is 54 degrees and that this one is 54 degrees. So you still have to interpret your answer. So you actually do get two answers because we know that there's always gonna be two answers um, because of the two quadrants being positive and two quadrants being negative for sine. And so 54 degrees, well, this happens to be 180 degrees and we get to add another 54 degrees, which makes it 234 degrees. That's one of your answers. And the other one of your answers is going to be 360 degrees minus 54 degrees. And that's going to give you 306 degrees. So there's your two answers. You have to take into account the sign first and then what um, ratio you're talking about second. And that way you can determine which quadrant it's going to be. Our final example is going to be talking about finding exact values by using reference angles and special triangles. So we can also use this concept of reference angles, which we just used in the last example, along with the special right triangles from yesterday to find the exact value of some angles other than 30, 45, and 60 degrees. So here's our example. It says find the exact value for cosine of 135. Well, if I draw a sketch, which always helps, 135 degrees puts me in quadrant number two. And if I make a triangle here, I actually do get a 45, 45, 90 because the reference angle for 135 degrees is 45. So that means cosine of 135 degrees is we know that cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So we need to know the adjacent side and the hypotenuse. And what we can do here is use our ratio. So we know that this is a one, this is a one, and this is a root two. So our adjacent side is a one, and our hypotenuse is root two, which we realized yesterday by multiplying the top and the bottom by root two is root two over two. Now, the one thing that we have to take into 
consideration is the cast rule. So in quadrant number two, the only thing that's positive is sine. We're talking about cosine. So that means that this ratio in the end is going to be negative. And if you want to check in your calculator, you can plug cosine of 135 degrees in there. You're going to get a negative answer. And that negative answer will also be the same thing as root two divided by two. So in summary, remembering the Sokotoa thing from that we learned last year and using the cast rule will allow you to answer a number of different types of questions. And remember that you can always apply the ratios for special right triangles and reference angles to find the exact values for angles that have 30, 45, or 60 as a reference angle. And finally, drawing a diagram is always going to help you understand the question a little bit better. So your assignment is on pages 96 to 99. Good luck, and we'll see you in class.